as uh, the season, regular season beginning to wind down for you all. Uh, you make a trip down to Virginia Beach area. Unfortunately, only able to get two games in, but uh, two really good games and a uh, big win against one of the top teams, uh, I guess, in the region. Yeah, it was a tremendous game against Chesapeake down there. Chesapeake's a defending Virginia State champion and uh, been regionals multiple times and made it into the World Series last year and played some tight games down there and wasn't able to advance into the finals, but just a tremendous baseball team full of talent and D1 talent. And uh, it was good to see our guys, uh, you know, stand up to that and, you know, get some good at-bats against some D1 pitching. And, you know, certainly wasn't a game or a team that you're going to play and pay at your stats, that's for sure. But it was definitely a, a great game for those kids, and, and they grinded it out and showed, um, you know, that they have some, some moxie and, and they can play with some of the best teams in the region when they when they bring their A game. Trip, obviously, you know, things didn't go how you wanted with the weather, but uh, getting to go down there and, and uh, take the guys kind of away from the area to a new place, uh, what was that like in terms of getting some bonding and some away from, I guess, Berkeley County? Yeah, I mean, we got away from the county. We got away from, you know, um, all, all that. Uh, it comes with, you know, playing at home and just got to get together. We got in town. Uh, most of the guys got in town on Friday prior to the game, and that game was uh, was hot. It was just really hot down there and extremely humid. And he, he, he did indexes, you know, above 100. So, Friday night just, just took the toll on everybody and I uh, didn't see much out of them Friday night after that game because of the heat and, and the way that game went and the, the mental exhaustion with the physical exhaustion. But Saturday got up early, played a game against the River Rats, a tight game up until about the fifth or sixth inning when Bats came alive and got into their bullpen. And at that point, they had to do some pitching. And, um, you know, they planned on playing two games, uh, you know, a couple more games this weekend as well. But our guys just after seeing that, you know, pitching the night before was just uh, hungry to see something that wasn't quite uh, as fast and uh, velo, not, not as much movement, uh, uh, a little lesser pitching, and they, they feasted on that. And then the rains came down after the first inning of the Williamsburg game, and the Williamsburg looked like they were going to be a, a team that was going to give us a great game, and we were looking forward to that. And then also uh, the 280 Seals on, or excuse me, the Frogmen on Sunday, um, looking at their record and talking to their coaches, I felt like it was going to be a good matchup as well. So, you know, we wanted to play. Our guys were hungry to play. They, they, they wanted to get it done. But, um, as far as the bonding goes, after the rain came on the Williamsburg game, uh, most of them uh, made it off to the beach. A couple of them a little bit stayed in the air conditioning, did a little shopping and, and walking around. But for the majority of them, they were down at the beach and, uh, got to bond a little bit and then hang out in the motel, hot lobbies and restaurants. So, yeah, I mean, you know, as far as bonding goes, those guys are, they don't need much bonding. I think they see each other enough. We practice a lot, but just to get away from that atmosphere and just hang out as friends. Yeah, that was a great thing. Trip, uh, what were some of your, I guess, main takeaways here from those two games? I think one thing, our biggest uh, takeaway was that our, our guys realized that you know they can, they they can compete at that level. I mean, they they can compete against you know other state champions. They can possibly, you know, go go to the West Virginia State tournament and make an impact and possibly move on and. And if they were to, you know, to have that fortune that, that they could compete, you know, at that next level against the state champions, I think, I think they, they realize now that, you know, that, that they, they have that ability if they show up and then they play their game, you know, and uh, take it serious. And, and I think that, uh, like I said before, we're kind of trending in the right direction before we, last year, I think we climbed the mountain pretty quick and then kind of leveled out. And this year we've got a lot, lot got a lot of guys reps and you know we got that rain break which hurt a little bit but you know, i wish our pitchers had more innings and our hitters had a few more bats but we've done everything we could to, to, to uh you know to offset that and play as much as possible and in our squad and do everything that we can do but you know i think our guys are ready to make you know a, an area run and possibly you know and, and hopefully fortune to get to stay and go down there and, and uh, make an impact and possibly um you know do some good things there a trip, like you mentioned, only about a week or so until the area tournament here. What, and what specifically would you say is the, the main strength of your team right now, as you mentioned that you're kind of on the right track heading into this area tournament next week? What's the main thing that you think is really the core strength of this team? 
Well, I, I think the core strength of this team is depth. I mean, depth and, and certainly the way they hit the baseball. You know, they're hard outs. You know, they, they make it really hard on pitching staffs to get them out. Uh, they don't strike out a lot, um, you know, defensively. But they're pretty tight. But, I mean, I, I just think that we have replaceable parts. Uh, cause should someone go down or we lose someone, as you've seen, you know, we should have – Connor here, we should have, uh, you know, Lopez here, um, you know, those guys, and we were able to replace them. I mean, they're not, don't, don't, don't think for a minute that those player of the year guys are replaceable, but we were able to maintain, um, you know, so, and then I think the same thing now with uh, the guys that are here, and we wish those guys were with us, but, you know, we do see that we can, we can move on uh, if, if something were to happen, have a misfortune, the depth there, but they're just really tough outs on a pitching staff. I mean, they make long innings. It might have two quick outs, and they seem to grind out an inning or grind out a run, and, you know, they're getting guys on and getting them over and the bunting and playing baseball, and, uh, you know, we need to limit the walks on the uh, pitching side, but I think that kind of goes with just – not getting these guys up on the mound enough, and that's that's partly on me and, and and mostly on the weather. But you know, but right now, if we can get the pitching staff and you know, some innings here this week, we got a doubleheader Wednesday and a game on Saturday, and possibly an inner squad on Friday, and <clears throat> trying to take up another game to give these guys some more live innings. I think we're going to go into the area and state tournament in pretty good shape, and uh, I'm going to score some runs. I was going to ask you about that. Do you think that uh, kind of having a, a front-loaded, because of the weather, kind of a front-loaded schedule where you, I believe you played 14 games in the month of June and only going to get eight uh, with the ones on the schedule right now for this month, do you think that that might help kind of maybe giving, a, giving some guys a little bit of rest uh, before they get to the area, then the state and hopefully the regional tournament? Well, I think it made them hungry to play. You know, they found out that, I mean, you got through a little bit of a grind in, in, in June, and then, uh, you know, certainly um, I wouldn't say false game that you need to play every day uh, regardless, and you need to figure it out, and some days you're not going to come and, and feel good or or uh, yeah, bring your A game, but you need to. And I think that the break and the weather, and just like this weekend, they wanted to play. So I talked to Coach Ryan Childs, and he said uh, – these kids can't catch a break two weeks in a row that they've you know won two games on Saturday and weren't able to compete as a number one seed on Sunday and he said the kids were hungry he said but you know you like to see that you like to see that they wanted to be there they wanted to you know you take a kid in the summer and scrounge it out after you know 18 19 games and dedicating their summer and to have them hungry to jump back on a baseball field when the heat indexes are you know pushing 100 and a lot of their friends are at the pool or at parties that that just says a lot about their dedication so. Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, come back. I think that as long as we can, you know, get his double hitters in on Wednesday and get to, get his game on Saturday and possibly an inner squad and then get some meaningful games in next week before the state tournament and advance, I, I think, yeah, I think at the end we're going to be June and July kind of even out as far as numbers and um, we're going to be pretty healthy going into the state tournament if we, if we were to make it there. You mentioned the junior squad. Uh, so they, it looks like they got two more games left on their schedule, or the regular season schedule. Is there a postseason for them? Uh, is that something that they're going to be able to participate in? Yeah, they're in the they're they're in the area with Elkins and Buchanan. They've uh, secured the number one seed, and so two ga- two teams out of that area advanced to an eight team state tournament in Bridgeport on the twenty first, twenty second, and twenty third. So. Next Sunday, they go to uh, Elkins, and they get the winner of Buckhannon and, and uh, Elkins. If they were to win that game, they advance automatically because the other team would drop down and play for the second place. So they need the win on Sunday against Elkins uh, to advance to the state tournament and uh, as, as the area champion or lose that game and then win the backup game and, you know, go in as the area runner-up. But um, they have a great opportunity as they've already actually beaten the Elkins senior team in Morgantown. So I expect that they'll have some success when they go to Elkins and play one of those two teams. And um, so it could be a 21, you know, they could be at the state tournament on the 21st to the 23rd. And hopefully our team will be headed down to the state tournament that following Monday and, uh, so we can do good things down there and and, uh, and have a have a uh, and to remember post fourteen program. Trip, what's your uh, thoughts on the area and how you match up with the other teams in the tournament? You know, I think it's a 
Certainly, North Berkeley's a startup team. They've got guys that can do some damage, you know, as far as offensively. Um, not sure, you know, they've got a few guys that are out for different reasons. Uh, maybe it hurts their depth a little bit, but I think we can match up there well. We split with uh, Potomac Valley and them that they have guys. You know, they've got a great team. Kaiser went to the state tournament and. Um, you know, they've got some pitching over there. They showed they could hit the baseball when we went to their place. Um, we showed that we could hit the baseball at our place. But I think ultimately, hopefully we can get uh, a couple of our, you know, one, two, three guys up on the mound and uh, and shut down that pitching and, uh, and, and, and hit and protect our – so we play at home and hopefully we can uh, reproduce what we – what we did when we played them early in the year. They're a different team than they were earlier in the year. I think anybody will see that. They played a great schedule. Matt's done a great job of getting them a good schedule. Got them down to Myrtle Beach in a tournament, and uh, they just beat Fort Cumberland over the weekend. So, us, they're riding a pretty good winning streak against some good clubs. So they're coming in in hot. So it's going to be a it's going to be a fun um, series. Hopefully Wednesday we can win a couple games against North Berkeley or, or outscore them. And if we can do that, we can maintain the number one seed. And um, if that's the case, then. North Berkeley would play um, Valley on Tuesday night, and then we would get the winner of that on Wednesday, and then there would be elimination game following that Wednesday night, and then Thursday there would be a championship game for the area, champion the area runner-up as two teams go. So two of the three teams are going to go to state, and at the moment we're thought we're in the number one seed because we split with we split with uh, coming to Valley, but we've scored more runs. So if we can split with come with a uh, um, the Knights and, and score more runs or win both games, we can maintain that and get the first round by and have to play Tuesday. That's what we're going to focus on Wednesday night. Trip over uh, this part of the summer for your team, we've been trying to do our best to follow along with uh, the announcements of guys on where they want to go after this summer. And Are there any updates with some guys that I guess are still maybe undecided that you've heard? Ruess was going to HCC, if you knew that. Um, he's committed there, and uh, Sippert has committed to uh, Frederick Community College right now. Um, Colin Reed's got a few offers on the table. We expect him to make some decisions here soon with you know, a couple of different teams. He's got big interest. A lot of guys calling, looking for him. Uh, big interest out of Allegheny. Uh, you know, um, West Virginia Tech's looking for a first baseman, so um, that's the thing that's really starting to heat up. Uh, you know, Fletcher is a uh, Fletcher and uh, Oviedo both are on a lot of people's radars. They're just underclassmen at this point and can't 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 be visited or whatever. But uh, their JMU coach was at the game today when we played Vienna to take a look at Lane, and uh, you know he got a good hard look at, at at Fletcher and his numbers. So, and and this weekend he's playing a little bit of a perfect game tournament, I believe, and got some looks. So our guys are you know, on the radar, and uh, you know. The rest of them are going for the most part. Boober at this point's a little undecided and down with him here soon and trying to figure out exactly what his interests are and, and uh, start to focus on getting him more looks and, and a visit here and there as the season winds on. And he's in pretty good shape. He threw a great game against that River Rats team down there and, uh, and through the contact. And so, yeah, our guys are, um, you know, I think they're all setting themselves up and, you know, and having a pretty good portfolio to uh, to get multiple offers and that a pretty good, you know, 90, 90, 95% uh, rate of getting kids to the next level. Um, hey, Bubs, he's going to Potomac State now. You got an offer over there. So I think the guys are, you know, they're all going to play baseball at the next level at this point, the way it looks. Trip Tubin, our guest, Berkeley Post 14 Hornets manager. Trip, thanks for the time. We'll see you this weekend. All right, thank you.